Thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored to be on this panel with people who are putting uh, a lot of energy and in some cases I think their lives on the line to tell the truth about what's happening in Nigeria. Uh, let me build on what has been said by my distinguished colleagues. I believe that what is afoot here is jihad. It is a concerted, systematic, organized, and increasingly genocidal effort to remove from Nigeria most especially from the areas of Nigeria that are resource rich. Christians who are by definition under this Sharia supremacist program that drives jihad. Enemies of Islam and people that can be eliminated or otherwise removed at will. And this creates not just a very strong contradiction to the party line. The party line, I'm afraid, is not confined to the government of Nigeria. It is also the party line of significant parts of our own government here in the United States. Namely, that as has been said, this is just farmers and herdsmen who can't get along. And they're somehow mutually responsible for the bloodletting that seems to be virtually, if not entirely, confined to the farmers. How does that work? Well, it works if, in fact, it is jihad. And the herdsmen, the Fulani militants primarily, are armed to the teeth, as well as doctrinally, religiously, if you will, but I think of it more as ideologically driven to engage in this religious ethnic cleansing of those who are not with the Sharia. Our challenge, it seems to me, is to be truthful about that reality. Uh, I'm very pleased to be co-sponsoring with this team this particular event, but we also had the privilege of working with uh, specifically the International Committee on Nigeria a few weeks ago. and sponsored a delegation from Nigeria, we called the Nigeria Crisis Delegation. I had the opportunity to introduce some extraordinarily brave men and women who, again, had come here to tell the truth, to bear witness to what they had personally experienced in some cases and what they had seen uh, in their communities in the way of this kind of genocidal effort to remove Christians from their lands. They were vilified by the government of Nigeria even by the vice president of Nigeria, who was invited to what I call a come to Jesus meeting with our own vice president, Mike Pence, after his chief of staff and others on his staff heard from the Nigeria crisis delegation. And after that meeting between the two vice presidents, the embassy spokesman for Nigeria once again vilified those who or truth-telling about what's going on in their country. So it brings us to what do we do about this? Uh, the congressman has identified, uh, former congressman, just for the record, he didn't start serving in 1918. Uh, I believe it was 1981. Um, it was a long time, but it wasn't quite that long a time. And I'm sure it felt most days like it was about that long a time. But he served with great distinction, of course, and he has been a tremendous leader on all of these issues, both in and out of government. And what he has said is so true that there does need to be findings of fact, specifically that genocide is taking place. In 
genocidal activity building to full on genocide is taking place in other places. Not just at the hands of the Fulani, but of course at Boko Haram's, as well as the Islamic State of the West Africa province. That would be the Islamic State that we think we have defeated, some do, in the Middle East. That will be the Islamic State that we hoped to deprive of their caliphate in Iraq and Syria. And that would be the Islamic State that together with Boko Haram and together with the Fulani, joined as they are by this shared commitment to imposing Sharia on the entirety of Nigeria, and for that matter, I believe, the Lake Chad region beyond. They are seeking to reestablish a caliphate on a vastly grander scale and with considerably greater money and therefore power than ever would have been possible in the parts they occupied of Iraq and Syria. So think about that. It's not just the nightmare of possibly tens of millions of Christians being driven from the country into these refugee flows with ripple effects for Africa, for Europe, almost certainly for this country and beyond. It is that what will be filling the vacuum that's thus created will be the jihad of the Islamic State. And I think it's fair to expect that it won't be confined to Nigeria or even the Lake Chad region. It will be spreading throughout West Africa and far beyond. So what do we do about it very quickly and very superficially, perhaps? We believe at Save the Persecuted Christians that it is incumbent upon all of us to hold the persecutors accountable for what they're doing. And more to the point, to create costs to them for their crimes against humanity. President Trump, to his credit, took this basic proposition out for a test drive not so long ago. Last year, he called to account the regime of Recep Tayyip Erdogan for the persecution of one specific Christian, an American Christian, a missionary by the name of Pastor Andrew Brunson in Turkey. He not only held him accountable, but when Erdogan refused to release Pastor Brunson to impose some very punishing sanctions on the steel and aluminum industries in particular of Turkey, the effects of which are still being felt in that country, by the way even though Pastor Brunson, thank God, is now out. In fact, I had a chance to visit with him briefly this weekend in Denver, Colorado, where he spoke very powerfully about the need to hold the persecutors accountable, as was done with great effect in his case, but now needs to be done on a far larger scale to stave off this disaster in Nigeria. Let me close by saying that in addition to holding the persecutors accountable, we should also be holding those who enable the persecutors accountable. I happen to be wearing a pin, or some outside if anyone would like one. It features prominently the letters SPB. On the pin it stands for Stop Persecuting Believers. It's also the acronym for one of the most prominent law firms and lobbying operations in this city, Squire Patton Boggs. We have made it our purpose in the Save the Persecuted Christians initiative to use this upcoming ministerial, whose margins we're meeting today, as an opportunity to raise the visibility of what Squire Patton Boggs is doing on behalf, not of Nigeria, fortunately, but Alas, communist China, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Cameroon, in the Lake Chad region, I believe, and the Palestinian Authority, lobbying on their behalf to protect them from accountability, 
to get benefits from the American taxpayer and otherwise to prosper even as they engage each and every one of those regimes in systemic state-sponsored persecution of Christians and usually other faith minorities as well. They are not alone, to be sure, in such representation. They just happen to be particularly egregious in doing it. And last week, Save the Persecuted Christians and a coalition of 44 other groups Sorry. came forth to tell Squire Patton Boggs to cease and desist with this enabling of persecution. We encourage you to join us. Thank, Thank you. you.